Ah, yes, look at us, going out there and catering why I want to one very specific fan base that has taken over the entire conversation when it comes to prospects. Now, sure, we had been talking about the last little while here, final players that may fill in the cracks in the top 10. This has been a pretty good pattern. We're trying to fill it out so that at least the top 10 guys have why I want videos when the draft does come and go, and maybe extend that a little bit past to maybe top 15. We may miss a few names here and there once the actual draft comes and goes, but I'm making a bet with this video. Because when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks sitting at that 11th overall spot, this seems to be the guy that more and more people are insinuating the Canucks might actually take. And he's not a player that's projected to go 11th overall anywhere. In fact, if you go over to his consolidated ranking, his average based off of all the outlets is at 27th. Let's head over to Regla BK in the Junior 20 SHL and talk about a right-handed defenseman whose name has been circulating around Vancouver lately, Tom Villander. Now, I get it. Oh, his name is Willander, but... I think it's a pattern everybody is familiar with by now. In Swedish, the W is translated into two Vs, so it's a hard, quick Vilander. And that's kind of how the commentators go out there and pronounce it if you watch the regular Junior 20 video, and it's how a lot of the scouts pronounce it as well. So today we're heading over and talking about a guy who has actually been ranked a lot lower than all the other guys we've talked about. This may be the lowest ranked guy on average that we're bringing up aside from Braden Jaeger, I'm pretty sure. And so, for Villander, there's a very intriguing reason as to why this guy is here. He's 6'1", 179 as a right-handed defenseman, so automatically, pretty solid frame, not a small guy, not a big guy, very decently sized guy, and his consolidated ranking, as we had said, was at 27th overall. In fact, most of the outlets here, Elite Prospects, they have him at 23, Future Considerations has him at 37, Bob McKenzie has him at 46, but there are some outlets that are super high on him. Craig Button, for example, has Villander at number 8, and you had yourselves Cam Robinson make an appearance on Sakaris and Price saying that Villander is 12th on Cam's board, so he said that if the Canucks ended up taking this guy, it would be a pretty good fit. Well, why exactly is Villander even here in the first place? I mean, if you go over to his numbers, you look at the points, the guy had 25 points in 39 games in the Junior 20 regular BK team, which is pretty okay. I mean, he's in the Junior League, so he's playing off against guys in his own age range, and he had two games played in the regular SHL, but he had zero points there. What exactly makes this guy so highly touted in some eyes, and in others, a lot lower on their own rankings? Well, if you go over to the Elite Prospects scouting report, this is what it says on Villander. His value stems from the combination of high-end skating and motor. He is always engaged defensively, using his dynamic posture and evasive footwork to guide attackers away from the middle and break up plays along the boards. When you add in the fact that he is both strong and skilled physically and relentlessly competes for every puck, he is a nightmare to play against. Even if you start or manage to gain an advantage, Villander has the quickness to recover most of the time. And as Cam talked about in the Sakaris and Price segment, which will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to it, Villander is just a very solid, defensively-minded defenseman who really does have a bit of snarl to his game, who's not afraid to get a little physical, get a little dirty, and not be afraid to get his nose in there. Not to mention the fact that his defensive game is particularly strong alongside of the mobility, the smooth skating, and the quick step and the motor. This is a guy who, for all intents and purposes, could max out as one of the better defensive defensemen in this year's draft. And if you're talking about other right-handed defensemen like Axel Sandin Pelika, David Reinbacher, these guys might not be available too long in the 2023 draft because we know right-handed defensemen always end up going higher than they probably should be. And so, with all the analysis pointing at Villander potentially being maybe a top 15 guy in some people's eyes, a guy towards the end of the first round in other people's eyes, it wouldn't be the biggest reach in the world for a team like Vancouver to go out there at 11th and take him instead. 
Let's go over to another article. This is the Hockey Writers, their own scouting report on Villander, back from April 23rd, 2023, written by Peter Baraccini. Towards the end of the article, there are some quotes from Hattie Kay on Dauber. Fleet-footed and rangy, Villander can skate circles around opponents to find a lane to exploit. He is reliable in the breakout and solid defensively, both off the rush and in his own zone. His puck skills aren't anything to write home about, but he gets shots on net and opens the ice laterally for his teammates with the occasional change of sides. Tony Ferrari of the Hockey News said this, the young Swede has produced at a moderately good rate at the Junior 20 level in Sweden. He diffuses oncoming rushes by closing the gap and dislodging the puck with his stick before quickly moving the puck to his forwards up ice. Villander shows intelligence and generating zone exits, whether with his feet or his passing ability. Brandon Holmes of Future Considerations said this, He displays very good vision with the puck and his stick. He's able to identify passing lanes through the neutral zone effectively or make plays with the puck when joining the attack from the offensive blue line. There also were a few other people comparing his game to Anton Strawman, if that rings a bell. I know he's pretty much a recent NHL defenseman, but he's a little bit on the older side. So if anybody out there is trying to think of stylistic comparisons for this player... Think Anton Strauman, but a little bit more fluid and a little bit more, uh, dare I say, eager to work and fight for what it is he is owed on the ice, both in his territory and when forcing himself into puck battles. Furthermore, there is this brilliant article written by Villander by Isabella Urbani on Canucks Army. There's a very real possibility that Canucks will draft Villander, and the reason I'm bringing this article up is because there are a few other quotes from other people in the scouting community. Craig Button said this, Villander equals robust. That's the way he plays the game. He does that in every single area of the game, defensively around his net and certainly offensively. When I watch Tom Villander play, I kind of see a combination of Charlie McAvoy and Rasmus Anderson. Maybe not high-end offensive ability, but the ability to contribute in an elite fashion in every single area of the game. Those types of players drive play on your back end. That's why Craig Button has him at number eight, isn't it? Harmondale said this, You could understand why Villander's two-way skill set as a right-shot defender could appeal to the Canucks. He doesn't have the highest upside as he lacks dynamic skill, playmaking, and creativity, but it's difficult to find a right-handed D who could skate, defend hard, and move pucks well while also boasting above-average size, which will make him a coveted player. And so long story short, this is a player that at the end of the day, he may not ever get 40, 50, 60 points in an NHL season. But if he could be your absolute rock, your reliable puck moving defenseman who could shut down the play with ease in his own zone and on the defending rush, Villander might be your guy. The question is, where do you go out there and take him? Cam Robinson in the video that we talked about earlier on Sakaris and Price kind of insinuated that he feels there's more of an offensive game to Villander that we have not seen too much of yet, and that sort of came alive at the U18s because this season he actually was really good at that tournament, 8.7 games played for Team Sweden. And so for Villander heading into the next few years, it's going to be really interesting to see where his development takes him, especially since next year he's going to be playing at the Boston University Terrier system. He's coming to the NCAA. And so for anybody who's saying, oh, this guy's just a Swedish defenseman, he's playing in Sweden, he's getting too used to big ice, he's not getting the proper habits of North American style, hey, guess what? He's coming over and he's playing in college right away next season. So we'll see how he's able to adapt to the North American style game. He'll probably be playing with Lane Hudson, who is one of the best college players we have seen in decades. And I'm really excited to see where his development goes because of it. Now, whether or not that influences your decision on where this guy should be drafted, that's up to you. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Where do you feel Villander should be drafted based off of what he has done this season, based off of where you think he can go in the future? And if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, because let's face it, a lot of y'all are probably watching this video. What are your thoughts on this guy? He played for Regla, and we know that Niels Hoaglander came from Regla, so there's a pretty good connection there. If you think this is the guy to maybe fit a Chris Tanev-esque replacement sort of role, then let me know in the comments. What do you think about that? What do you think about this guy being the Canucks pick at 11th overall? For me personally, I'm trying to brainstorm a number of names I would have above Villander for Vancouver, but if the Canucks end up going for him because, you know, they like Swedes, La Karamaki, Elias Pettersson, and then the Leo Carlson rumors, it's all up there in Sweden, Patrick Alvin doing his thing. 
this pick would make sense to me. And I don't think I'd be too disappointed. But you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you feel the same way. If you're a fan of any other team, then what are your thoughts on Villander? Sorry that the Canucks discourse kind of took over this entire video. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section either way. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>